the Combine Soldier, the second most known enemy of Half-Life 2 and your main enemies throughout the games. But what makes them work? Are their AI really as dumb as people claim? And how could you use them in custom apps or fight better against them in your own playthroughs? Half-Life 2 has little enemy type variety per each faction, at least compared to Half-Life 1, but the real variety of the combat comes from the weapon each NPC is using. Also, all the damage and health values can be looked up in the skills.cfg. Currently all the bullets do 3 damage. First off in the soldier's arsenal is the SMG. Soldiers equipped with the SMG make up the meat of the Combine forces. They have horrible accuracy at range and have about a 50% chance to hit at medium range. But at close range, they can be quite a problem due to the weapon's high rate of fire and lack of a minimum attack range. A soldier with an SMG isn't likely to kill you, but he will finish you off. Next up is the shotgun. You don't joke about a soldier with a shotgun, they will kill you without hesitation. Valve seems to understand this now given them a new red uniform ever since Half-Life 2 was moved to the orange box. Due to the low attack range of the shotgun, it's not unusual to see a shotgun or charging head to engage you. There's rarely more than one shotgun per engagement, and for good reason. The Overwatch Standard Issue Pulse Rifle, or AR-2 to everybody else, they're the backbone of the combine. The AR-2 has become a lot less standard issue recently. In Half-Life 2, soldiers have decent accuracy with them, but in the episodes their accuracy has gotten a boost, so be careful when using or fighting them. The AR-2 has a far attack range, and this is the range the player's arsenal is least comfortable with. Four soldiers with AR-2s are a lot deadlier in the episodes than in Half-Life 2. This weapon is also used by the Combine Elites. With their whopping 70 health and the fact that they use the Energy Ball secondary, Elites should be used even more carefully. Fun fact, soldiers do in fact shoot where you've been for a split second. It's only really noticeable with the AO2 and shotgun, and only really happens when the soldier starts shooting while standing still, but it's cool to see. And finally, the grenade. Most of the other weapons are likely to hurt you, but the grenade is where the soldier gets its punch. Soldiers will use them to flush you out or to just displace you. Be warned, on hard difficulty, they'll throw them more often. Also, soldiers won't actually grenade teammates. They'll check if someone's in the blast radius and tell them to move. Friendly fire does happen, however, if the grenade accidentally knocks into a bit of geometry or if a teammate moves into the blast radius. Thankfully, soldiers are normally attentive when avoiding grenades. I once read a post that said something along the lines of, Half-Life 2 soldiers are stupid, they just stand there and shoot. This person might have just spawned a couple soldiers in Gary's mod, because when in a squad, their AI really shines. When attacking soldiers, take turns. If a soldier gets low on ammo or decides to move to cover, another soldier will come out of cover as the other one retreats. Nothing will interrupt a soldier's run to cover, not even a grenade. A max of two soldiers per squad can shoot at one enemy. This also applies when flanking. Soldiers don't flank like, say, hunters do, but this allows them to be more versatile. If a player moves to cover, two soldiers will move to get a line of fire to where they last saw the player. This potentially could be anyone. And if the player pops back out, the soldiers will keep moving to that position, essentially flanking the player. On their shot with a heavy weapon, as in the AR-2, the g 7 or enough pellets from the shotgun, that soldier will keep flanking. This is why soldiers seem to charge sometimes. This usually happens in narrow spaces where a line of fire can't be established easily. Now I mentioned only two soldiers can flank at a time, but that's not always how it works out. Combine soldiers have an ability the soldier of Half-Life 1 never had. They can move and shoot at the same time. As mentioned before, a max of only two soldiers can shoot at a single enemy at any one time. So if a guy flanking stops shooting while he's flanking, it's possible someone else can move to flank while the other guy is still moving. That means when the first guy is finished flanking, he might not be able to shoot. Sometimes that just happens if the soldier has to run a long way. He could just end up taking cover instead, but what if he can't? Say he's cornered, what then? Valve knew of this bug and made a fallback case where if a soldier can't take cover, he'll charge the player and try to melee them. This doesn't happen that often in the main game, but I've seen it in custom maps before. It's noticeable when a soldier hesitates for a second as if deciding to shoot. The best way to avoid this is to have less soldiers active at once, make the combat space easier for soldiers to move around in, make it easier for soldiers to get a line of fire, or to just script the engagement a little bit more. There's also the two pressure the enemy tactical bearings for the soldier, which doesn't work if there's a script active such as a standout. Both types are the same, just one switches to the normal type when they're done moving and they can see an opponent who is 30 feet away. Instead of establishing a line of fire, the soldier will charge toward where they last knew of the enemy. This sort of avoids the shooting bug because this type is designed around moving and shooting. This type is best used when you want soldiers to move to a more effective range. When pressuring the enemy, a soldier won't stop even when shot with a heavy weapon. This is one of the main traits of the Combine AI. They're designed to get shot. If a soldier can crouch and still shoot, they have a 50% chance of doing that when shot. This really becomes a problem when engaging elite AO2 or shotgun soldiers. Some of the best examples of the Combine Soldier AI aren't in the street wall levels, but in the more open environments such as Nova Prospect and the coast. Adding another hallway to a level, opening up the top of a level, and just adding more solid cover can bring out the best in the Soldier's AI. 
They're designed around movement, using grenades and energy balls to flush the player out, stubbornly suppressing the player, or committing to a movement, all show how the Combine Soldier is cleverly designed. They just need to be cleverly used.